Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily find where most errors are going to be in a script and fix them. This tutorial is sponsored by John John Games. So if you guys are looking for a channel with plenty of content, gaming and creativity, John's channel is the place to go. You should probably check out some of his socials too and stay up to date with all his latest content. Loads of stuff to see. You can find all kinds of games on there, some Grand Theft Auto stuff, even a couple of tutorials that even I haven't covered. If you fancy being sponsored in one of these tutorials, just like John John Games, all you need to do is click that join button below and become a sponsor. Now, on with the tutorial. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to my channel on video game development. There's always loads to see, loads to learn and loads to do. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. No doubt all of us at some point have come across a problem where we want to test our game but whenever we press play it will not work and we end up with compiler errors. And we've got a message down there saying all compiler errors have to be fixed before you can enter play mode. It may flash up on the screen, it depends what version you're using. Now the quickest and simplest way to kind of detect what's going on is to head to the console and you'll see maybe one, two, maybe even a whole heap of things here. And the first thing you're going to want to do is click on the clear button and this will get rid of any errors which are not threatening to the game per se. And we can see right now that we do have an error which is causing the entire game not to play. And if we read it we can see that it's pointing to this script and it's saying that the error is CS1002 and it's saying a semicolon is expected. Now if we look here we can see that it's got two numbers. If we look at this first one, it says 10. Now that 10 actually relates to the script itself. That means line 10. So if we go to line 10, we can see right here that we have indeed missed off a semicolon. So we can put that in place and save. So every time that you make a change to a script to get rid of an error, always save it because then that will bring up the next possible error. Now this is another one that's fairly common where it tells you something couldn't be found and then asks are you missing or you a directive or an assembly reference or something like that. Something to that effect anyway. I've seen people ask comments on that a lot on how they fix that error. Once again if we look at these two numbers here we can see that is line number 9 where the error is. So let's head back to the script and head to line 9 and we can see here that okay Maybe we're not very good at typing properly and we do want it to say integer but it actually says integer. There's two T's in there. So spelling is always a massive, massive thing to look out for whenever you're trying to debug a script and find out what is wrong. So in this case we can see that integer does not have two T's. So that is one thing that I will outright say you, you need to be careful of your spelling. So it's also worth noting as well that obviously the term integer, even though we fixed it, isn't actually a term recognized. Although it is an integer, it's not known in the script as an integer, it's known as an int. So once again, yep, you may have got the spelling right, however you need to make sure that you get the actual terminology correct. So. Let's change that to int and resave. And if we head back into our console, we'll find out what the next few errors are. So we can see that we have uh, cannot implicitly convert double to int. Basically what that means is you're trying to apply um, a decimal number to what should be a whole number. So in this case, it says on line 20, there is a problem. So we go to line 20 and okay, so we look at this and think, well, Okay, why is that a problem? And then we look and trace your script back to find out why that could be a problem. Don't just give up. Just giving up is not the way forward. So if you select that particular variable, it will highlight every instance of where it's used in the script. So in this case, we can see that the variable known as GTA is actually an integer and we're trying to apply a decimal number to it. So Let's remove that and save. And remember, we're on line 20. That was where the error said it was, line 20. Once again, 
27. So hopefully you can see at this point where this is going. Yes, I know some of these error messages may not be entirely accurate in what they're trying to say or what they're trying to tell you or anything like that. But the key is always going to be something like this. So line 27. Let's have a look at line 27. So line 27 has text there. So that line in itself is not actually wrong. But the fact that it doesn't know what text even is means that we have missed something out in the script. So in this case, to actually use that component of text, we need to add in a namespace to be able to tell the script that this is what text is. So like I say, it's not necessarily wrong, but it's saying that there is something wrong with line 27. So naturally, you have to head to line 27 of that script and then stop and think about what could cause that error. So like I say, if we add it in using unity engine.ui, it would get rid of that error and save. So head back and then finally, once you've got through all of your errors, I mean, hopefully your script doesn't have as many errors as that one did because that was a script I set up intentionally to have errors. Well, you can see that all errors have now disappeared and we are indeed able to play test our game. So like I say, this will fix most errors that you will come across. It doesn't necessarily matter what the error message says. It's where the error is located. Like I say, in this case, it's saying whatever line number it is. So if I undo a lot of all the errors that I've made there. In fact, I didn't go that far, did I? I think I did that. Uh, yeah, it was about there and save. So if we reset to what we had before. And we have a look. So it's always this first number that's the line. So always, always check your console. Check which line number you have an error on. Check that line to make sure you have everything correct. And if you do, then trace back everything. So if, like say, for example, we trace this one back because it was an integer and we're trying to apply a float. We trace this one back because we had a text component that it didn't recognize, so we had to add things in. But like I say, most of the time, you just need to go to that line number and you'll find where the error is. So hopefully, guys, that has helped you a little bit. I know a lot of people find scripting quite difficult and some things don't necessarily make sense. And sometimes some of these errors that we see are not very... They're not explained very well, are they? I mean... For a new person, that probably doesn't mean anything at all. For someone experienced, yes, we understand what that means. But for someone who's new to coding and doesn't quite understand what some of this means, these numbers here are important. So line number 12, remember that first number after the parentheses open is the line. That's where the error or the source of the error will be. So always go there. So if you want to know any more, leave a um, comment below. And if you want to ask a question, also leave a comment below. If you've got any tips yourself on solving errors, leave a comment. Do all that liking and subscribing and sharing, you know, that all the other YouTubers do, because why not? Uh, it, it's a thing, isn't it? It's what, it's what we all do. I don't know. Anyway, uh, hopefully it's made sense to you guys, and I will see you around in another one of my videos. Take care, guys, and I'll see you around.